Everyone has questions. Why am I here? Where will I go when I die? Is there really truth? But not everyone has biblical answers. Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study the Bible to draw closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Tom Brock. Welcome to the Pastor Study. For this half hour, we're going to talk with a woman who runs a pro-life clinic who helps rescue babies from abortion. And so, welcome. This is Janice Lamont. Thank you, Tom. And Janice, you run Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center. So women, some of them, who are considering abortion often end up in, in your ministry area. And you've, your place has saved a number of babies from abortion, have you not? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so tell, first of all, Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center, where is that? Okay, we're located in Burnsville, so we serve all of Dakota County. Okay, and in America today, tragically, one out of four babies is aborted. There are some mm -hmm. cities, I think like Washington, D.C., that it's maybe even over 50% of the babies Correct. that are aborted. So tell us, when you're, so you've got a pro-life clinic, it's, it, you do ultrasounds, all this kind of thing, and you're trying to help mothers keep their babies. Can you okay. tell me a story of some baby that was rescued from abortion? Sure, I'll, I can't use names, but I'll tell you the woman, uh, I'll call her Sarah. And she had come to us, we had done a pregnancy test, we did an ultrasound, but her situation was so desperate that she still felt abortion was her only choice. And she made an abortion appointment and my heart was just broken. I knew what abortion would do to her emotionally, physically, and spiritually, mm -hmm. and of course to the child. She was about 20 weeks pregnant, Tom. And so she did go to the abortion clinic and we continued to pray because we know that God answers prayers. And she went in the abortion and almost everything that we told her would happen started to unfold. And um, the image of her ultrasound that she had at Amnion just wouldn't leave her. And the beating heart that she heard, it, it just wouldn't leave her. And she got out of that abortion clinic, turned on her heels and came back to us and she had a beautiful baby girl. And that's just one of hundreds mm. of stories since we're Wonderful. 22 years into yeah. ministry. Let me ask you, Janice, just why are you against abortion? I mean, mm. don't we all have the right over our own bodies? Shouldn't mm. we? I mean, doesn't God understand if I'm financially fixed that it's okay to uh, strap, that it's okay to have? You know, mm. what, tell me why you're against abortion. Well, it starts with the first five words in the Bible. In the beginning, God created. Amen. So it's a lordship issue, Tom. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about Explain God. That. What do you mean it's a lordship okay, issue? Okay, it's about God being the creator of all things. He's the one who gives life. He's the one who takes life. And it's not ours to take, in, um, to take for any reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's through the whole continuum of life. Mm -hmm. And these women are desperate. They are um, thinking and sold a bill of goods that abortion will bring them freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, they can pray later and have forgiveness of sins is yeah. the thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sadly, many of them don't get to that point of mm -hmm. repentance. Yeah, and it's tragic to me, Janice. Some of our Protestant denominations mm -hmm. are now pro-abortion rights. The ELCA yeah, Lutheran Church pays for abortions mm -hmm. in its in its health care so. plan for pastors. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, I think the uh, Episcopal Church is the same way. The United mm -hmm. Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church, USA. So when you've got the church not upholding scriptures, no wonder exactly. you have confused uh, uh, parents coming into your office. Correct. Well, do you have any, if somebody asked you, where does it say in the Bible abortion is wrong, what do you respond to? How do you respond? Well, to uh, we can talk about uh, God knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalm 139. He knew how many days I had. Yep. And so we share with and young thou couples. Shalt not kill. Exactly, the yep. commandment. We share with um, young people that are in an unplanned pregnancy, and we see them from age 12, 13 years old through their 40s. Mm -hmm. An unplanned pregnancy can happen at any time. And so we share with them, the Lord is not surprised by this unplanned pregnancy. And it's not as if he's up in heaven saying, oh, I don't have a plan for this child and yeah. these people. 
He foreknows all things. Yeah. He knows this child. He has a plan for the for the mom and the dad. Mm -hmm. And so we always include the dad from the very first pregnancy test mm -hmm. on. And we tell them, it's not in your plans, but God has a plan and it's good. How often do you experience where the woman really probably wants to keep the child. Mm -hmm. She's being pressured by her boyfriend to have mm -hmm. the abortion. Is that normal? Is that frequent? That often happens. Um, and there are times where the flip happens, where he really does not want his child oh, aborted. Okay. And she is, you know, hell-bent, oh, literally, right. <laughs> on getting her baby aborted, or her parents or his parents. Oh. And so, so the parents of the of the woman, pregnant right. woman, want the abortion. Right. I recently spoke to a mom who had had an abortion, and I could tell that she did not have healing and repentance, and her daughter was pregnant, uh, about 15 years old, and mom took her to the abortion clinic too. And so now we have generational sin, where yeah. grandma has had an abortion, mm. mom has had an abortion, it's in the family. So when an unplanned pregnancy happens in their family, they go into automatic yeah. pilot and they have an abortion. Well, let's talk about too, there, if there's some woman watching this show mm. and she knows that the abortion she did years ago was a sin, mm. um, isn't there a group, is it called Conquerors? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that a post-abortion group for women who have had abortion who want to work through the guilt of that and right. receive the forgiveness of Christ? Right. Is that it? Is it called Conquerors? Yes, there's a group called Conquerors, and she can Google that. And Amnion, we do one-on-one -on -one biblical counseling okay, for post-abortion yep. uh, counseling. And most pregnancy centers um, in your local area, mm -hmm. you just look up Pregnancy Resource Center or Crisis Pregnancy Center. Yep. Um, offer post-abortion counseling or can direct and you to a place. It, it's amazing how this works. We had a woman give a testimony in our church that she had an abortion, really didn't think too much about it. Mm -hmm. Years later, she has a baby with her husband now, and uh, she has birth. It was looking into the face of her newborn child that it hit her yes. what she had done to her first child. Mm -hmm. And she came to Christ in repentance, forgiven, and mm -hmm. living a wonderful Christian life. But, you know, mm -hmm. Janice, what I like about Amnion, and I'll also give a plug for Amnion Crisis Pregnancy down in Burnsville, mm -hmm. and there's also Robbinsdale Women's Center mm -hmm. up in Robbinsdale. Not the abortion clinic, they're across right. the street from the abortion, right. but Robbinsdale Women's Center. Both of you, which I, what I love about your groups, you are very clearly Christ-centered. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes into the door, you are wanting to talk to them about Jesus and salvation. Mm -hmm. And does that happen much? Do people come to salvation mm -hmm. through this whole horrific event? Well, it's a long-term process and we don't always know the answer, but the number one, I, I call it two reigns of our ministry. And the first reign is always the gospel because just helping women and saving babies is not what we're all about. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be our calling. Mm -hmm. And so um, the women and men that come to us, um, as much as they will allow us, we share the gospel with them. We share bib biblical truths about their lives mm -hmm. and the way they're living. We give them a copy of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. We give them Bibles. We give them a gospel tract called How Good Are You? Um, and, and, and the point is, nobody's good. We all need Christ. Just, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so we have many <coughs> opportunities. And if they continue coming to us, because we want to see them throughout the pregnancy and for as many years in the future as they need help. Um, and sometimes people have a baby, and then it might be four years later, and they're ready for part two of the gospel and oh, to yes. commit their lives. And so we need to be there long term yeah. and not just say, here's a baby gift bag, here's some maternity clothes, mm -hmm. go and have a good life. No. And no. so we are responsible to bridge them into the local church of Christ, to be discipled mm -hmm. and encouraged. And so we're, we are a parachurch. We are doing the work of the local church. And we're thrilled that the local churches in Dakota County um, see Amnion in that way yeah. and are supportive of us. We're going to give your uh, phone number and your website out at the end of the program. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching this and want to support uh, Amnion or even volunteer and be part of their volunteer staff, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be glad to talk to those people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, Janice, um, uh, what do you think abortion is all about? I mean, what's really mm -hmm. going on that a mother would come to the place where she's willing to kill her unborn child? What's going mm -hmm. on there? Well, there's the big, big bird's eye picture. And the big bird's eye picture is um, in abortion, image bearers of God are destroyed. And we know the evil one 
is destructive, mm -hmm. bloodthirsty, a yeah. liar. Mm -hmm. So we know the evil one is behind all of that. Yeah, we do. I agree. And um, if we really take a look back historically, we know that the evil one would love to plot against God himself. It's something called deicide. He'd love to kill God if he could. Since he can't, he goes after his image bearers. Mm -hmm. Because we're all born in the image of God. Exactly. Even though we're sinners, we're still in the image of God. Exactly. All right. So there's this huge spiritual battle that yeah. we are in yeah. uh, because it has to do with life yeah. and uh, our Creator yeah. and our Redeemer. And, uh, you know, Janice, when I, as a pastor, sometimes I'll go out in front of the abortion clinic and we'll pray mm -hmm. for the people inside the clinic and mm -hmm. we're all very peaceful. We'll sing hymns and everything. But you can just feel the spiritual battle going on. Yeah. And my question for you is, when you go into your office, how, mm -hmm. how much do you feel the spiritual battle? Oh, well, I say sometimes I could wring my shirt out afterwards. Oh, I bet. It's unbelievable as we're sharing the gospel, as we're sharing the truth about the development of babies. In Minnesota, women are, are allowed to abort their babies through the first 23 weeks of life. That's five and a half months pregnant. Oh, my. And other states, they can do that even further along. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do ultrasounds. And we pay for it with tax dollars exactly, in, sadly. In, yeah, in Minnesota. And so Amnion does ultrasounds through the 23rd week of life so they can see their child moving and that it's a real baby. And so that's a free service that we provide. So the issue on the big side is it's about image bearers. It's about desperate women who buy a lie of the evil one. And there's a scripture in Isaiah, mm -hmm. what is this lie that I hold in my right hand? And they buy the lie that they will be freed from pressures. They, they're not ready to be a mother for whatever reason. Maybe they have other children. Mm -hmm. Maybe their marriage is falling apart. Mm -hmm. I know a woman named Johanna and she had two children, very little money. Her husband wasn't being faithful. And it was before abortion was legal. She tried three times to, opt to have an abortion. The first time she tried um, actually taking some kind of internal poisons yeah. that her friends told her would okay. bring on the abortion. It didn't. Uh -huh. The second time she put her head in a gas oven, desperate. And the third time she got enough money together to pay an illegal abortionist to do the abortion. And it was to be done on a Monday. And the woman was arrested the Friday before. Hmm. And Tom, I sit here to tell you that that desperate woman was my mother. Oh. And I am the baby. Is that right? Of that, that pregnancy. Wow. And wow. God ordained plans for my life. Amen. I never knew about my story yeah. until I'd been a director and working with women for about five years. And then my mother shared my own birth story. Oh and God ordained it before the foundations yeah. of the earth that Satan could not oh have my. me and that my calling in life was to share the gospel and help women uh, be pointed to Jesus Christ as yeah. Savior, as Lord. And you know, I don't know if you've probably seen that powerful uh, track that, would you abort your baby if yes. you were, uh, your baby would be born, uh, blah, 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 blah. If so, you just aborted Beethoven, you know, exactly. and they just take you through all this stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. What got you involved so, in this ministry? Well, I remember years ago watching Francis Schaeffer's Whatever Happened to the Human Race. Mm -hmm. um, it was a 16 millimeter film back then. I remember. And I had young children. I didn't, I'd never heard about abortion. I didn't know abortion was happening. The church was busy doing a lot of good things with missions, but social issues wasn't something that the evangelical church was going to mm -hmm. get too involved with. We mm -hmm. let the Roman Catholic mm -hmm. brothers and sisters handle these harder issues. Yeah, they were great on this. And we yeah. applauded them in the background but yeah. we didn't want to stand forth mm -hmm. and uh, I believe the Lord has used this sad issue mm -hmm. to bring his church together mm -hmm. and so when I heard it I was appalled I was a young mother and then God just put a burning call on my life mm. you need to do something they don't need to do something okay. you need to do something ah. and step so by that's step where that's where I and am. to discover then later that you were almost aborted exactly I mean Judy Garland was almost aborted I mean you can exactly. go on and on with these people that yeah. just barely made it are you um, when you said about how gut-wrenching and the spiritual battle that you can mm. face with with doing this work how do you protect yourself remain strong so that you can do this work? Do you have disciplines or what do you do to keep strong spiritually so you can do this work? 
Because the devil doesn't yeah. like you, Janice. He doesn't. <laughs> He's made it very clear to me. He will go after your health, your marriage, your family. Uh, this is a cutting edge um, ministry. Um, but we've read the end of the book, mm -hmm. Christ is Victor. Mm -hmm. And so he's Greater Victor now. Greater is in you than he the exactly. devil is in the world. And so we have prayer time throughout the day at mm -hmm. Amnion. Even in between clients, um, I might grab a counselor and say, this is a really difficult thing while the client's in another room or something and we pray. Uh, praise music, being under the word of God. Yeah. We have our scripture of the yeah. week, yeah. bathing ourselves in the word and knowing we can go in the counseling room and do what only Christ can do, as John yeah. Piper would say. Yes. So he is the one at work to quicken hearts. Our responsibility is to give truth, point yeah. people to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and his ways, and let the Spirit work. We burn out when we try to play Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and try to save babies or mm -hmm. save mothers. Our allegiance and our success is, Lord, you get the glory, yes. let me get out of the way. Yeah. And it is amazing when you see people who are just blinded, <coughs> all of a sudden, their eyes are quickened in front of you. And mm. I will never get over mm. uh, watching somebody come to life in Christ right in front of you. Have, you. have you ever had this happen where somebody rejects your message, they go and they have the abortion, and later they came back and said you were right? Exactly. Have you ever had that happen? Not a, a, too often, sadly. And not only that, they will bring their younger uh, sibling who oh. is in the same situation with them. I didn't listen to you, but please talk to my sister or oh, friend. Okay. And so um, all too late they found out. But boy, some of these women who have been through an abortion and men, because two thirds of women and men who are having abortions claim some kind of a Christian background. Mm -hmm. So we have these wounded people sitting mm -hmm. in the Church of Jesus yeah. Christ from yep. pastors on down, oh. uh, hidden secrets that the evil one uses to just uh, and, tie their ankles. And when I hear, and somebody told me this once, that they went into their Lutheran pastor, mm -hmm. and the Lutheran pastor advised, well, you know, you can have an abortion. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, is that man going to be in trouble on Judgment Day or yeah. what? Exactly. You know? And so we see so many of these people that do come back and do go through post-abortion biblical counseling mm -hmm. and are freed up. And the Lord is the great recycler of all our sins. Mm -hmm. He takes evil, he turns it to good for his glory. Yes. So it's all about his name being exalted. Um, of course, our hope is that the child lives too. Yes. Uh, but if not, their lives can be changed and they have well, such an impact. It's possible, and we're on camera too. Do you see that there, Janice? Yes. I want you to look in that camera if we can be a little hokey here. Mm -hmm. But if there's somebody, mm -hmm. actually probably camera three, huh, Fred? Uh, it, Janice, <laughs> if there is somebody out there that is considering an abortion, mm -hmm. uh, what, here you go, this camera. Okay. What, what would you say to that person? <laughs> you know, if you've had an abortion, I know your heart is heavy. I know you're facing a lot of anniversary syndrome, wondering if it was a boy or a girl. Will God ever forgive you? Where is that baby now? There is hope and help for you, and there is restoration in Jesus Christ. And we invite you to come to Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center or look up your local crisis pregnancy center, and there are people who stand ready who are trained in post-abortion counseling. So please don't carry this weight mm -hmm. on your own. The Church of Jesus Christ stands ready to see you reconciled with Christ and to taste of the freedom that comes because he's such a great Savior. And he forgives he our forgives sins. He forgives all sins. Yeah, and we need to say that, that yes. if, you've, if you've had an abortion and you're sorry and you're trusting in Christ, yeah. God has forgiven your sin. Make sure you forgive yourself and do your best to move on. Yes. Now look in the camera and talk to somebody who's pregnant and is considering mm. an abortion. So if you're pregnant or you think you're pregnant, I know you're terrified and worried about everybody else's response of who's going to leave me, who's going to stay, how can I have this baby, I'm broke, I have no money, the father of the baby and I may not even be getting along or not even together anymore. God knew about your situation before he even created the world and he knows about your child and he's got a great plan for both of you. Again, there are people who stand ready to help you and to put their arms around you, to walk you through everything for as many years in the future as you need us because God draws people together at times like this 
to give you the help and the hope. So if you're watching this today, it's a divine appointment by mm -hmm. God to give you hope and help for your future and your baby's future. We're going to put it up at the end of the program again, but can we put up now, please, that slide of the phone number and the address of, of Amnion Crisis Pregnancy. And if, you're, if you are pregnant, you can just call 952-898-4350. Check their website out, amnioncpc.org slash friends. We'll put that up later too, but thank you. All right, so Janice, I'm just curious to back to the whole spiritual warfare mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happens to me and you tell me. If, if, I take a kind of a public stand on this TV show and on radio mm -hmm. that sex outside of marriage is a sin, abortion is a sin, mm -hmm. homosexual behavior is a sin. And I get emails, but mostly people are appreciative of what I do. But I get some mm -hmm. awful emails, but overwhelmingly I get good response. Mm -hmm. What kind of res Do you have people calling your number and harassing you at all? Or <laughs> t tell me what the warfare is on your side of things. Well, there's a group called the National Abortion Rights Action League, NARAL, and they have a booklet out about how to go into the pregnancy center, pretend you're a client, tape record your session, and how you should report pregnancy centers as fake clinics um, to your attorney general. So the warfare is out there. You ever had it happen? Oh, I'm sure. Okay. I can tell by the way that they ask questions about a client that usually wants a pregnancy test and is scared doesn't ask the, the sort of questions like where do you get your funding and that type of thing. Oh. But um, we just <coughs> treat them as we would anybody else and God has protected us because we always tell the truth uh, because God is, uh, is about truth. The mm -hmm. word is truth. That's right. And um, so we have been respectful within our community mm -hmm. even to family planning agencies. We, we're not out to stir up um, political action. We're there for the women. Mm -hmm. So we have the opportunity to be at tables, uh, around table yeah. of people who are working with pregnant teens mm -hmm. to be respectful, to be thought of as a, a good place to send their clients. But yeah, there is a national attack against pregnancy centers. There's no and question. You know, Janice, I don't know about you. I'm guessing you do this. When I vote for somebody, to me, the number one issue is, do they believe in killing babies in the womb? Mm. If they do, I don't vote for them unless I have no choice. If both candidates right. are pro-abortion. But if a candidate is pro-life, those are the people I vote for. Mm -hmm. And what's your take on all this, politically? Politically, um, I would also believe that somebody who um, is pro-life is where I would go at. And of course, you want somebody who is in the cause for justice on many issues. But pro-life is kind of like the number one base. Mm -hmm. How you be believe about life from birth to the grave mm -hmm. really tells a lot about your character yeah. and also your submissiveness to God. Yeah. And so when we choose rulers, we're told to, you know, to choose godly mm -hmm. rulers, mm -hmm. you know. And so we pray for the rulers that aren't that way. Mm -hmm. And we do try to be the salt of the earth, mm -hmm. holding back um, sin in and our I, country. I would encourage people too. I was in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America for many years, but one of the big reasons I left is we tried to get them to stop paying for abortions with offering dollars in the church's health care plan, and we lost two to one. Mm. And I know the same thing goes on in the Presbyterian Church USA. I believe it goes on also in the United Church of Christ, the mm -hmm. Episcopal Church. And I would just encourage people, if you're going to a church that's promoting abortion, even with your offering dollars, mm -hmm. time to jump ship and find some better denomination that mm -hmm. follows scripture on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, sadly, if you're under that type of teaching and everybody is going to deal with life issues, uh, wherever the continuum of life is. Mm -hmm. Well, if I want to receive wise counsel from my pastor, I sure want to know that he has bent his knee to the Lord and creator of life Amen. in order to get good counsel back mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. And so when that piece is omitted from the church and it's seen as an act of stewardship mm -hmm. in some liberal churches to abort a child, there is something seriously wrong with their understanding of God. I don't know what God they are serving no. and have crafted for themselves, but um, the God of the Bible starts first five words, what do you believe about the sanctity of human Amen. life? And when you've got the head of the, I think it's called 
No, I, I won't say the name. There's an Episcopal priest, a woman, lesbian priest, who, run, who is the head now of an Episcopal seminary out east. She says abortion isn't just a blessing when you're financially strapped. When you're not financially strapped and you just don't mm -hmm. feel that it's, I mean, she lists, she lists any reason mm -hmm. that abortion is a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's just evil, and it's coming from mm -hmm. the top of a seminary mm -hmm. uh, uh, president. So, yeah. you know, again, uh, if... Uh, so you listen to the Word, and the Word says, um, blessed is he whose quiver is full. And, of children. And, of children, and children are a blessing of the Lord, mm -hmm. so you know you're being fed a, a, lie. Lie. a lie. Get out of a church yes. with that kind of the, influence. The reason, though, and I uh, preached on this a while ago, because Christians, a lot of them, are not reading their Bible, right. they're duped. Right. You know. Well, everybody, thank you, Janice, so you're much for being welcome. with us. And we're going to put on the screen again, uh, Amnion Crisis Pregnancy Center. If you would like to, if you're pregnant and you'd like to uh, get some counsel, if you had an abortion and you'd like to get some uh, forgiveness and counsel, or if you're uh, concerned that I need to take a stand and I need to either financially or with my hours volunteer some time, you call 952-898-4350 or check them out at amnionpcp.org. CPC. Oh, excuse me, amnioncpc. <laughs> Crisis Pregnancy Center slash uh, dot org slash friends. But Janice, uh, just thank you for the, the work you're doing. And everybody, pray for America. Mm -hmm. Pray for the babies we're killing. Mm -hmm. Pray for our politicians to start um, seeing the light of God on this. And pray that Christians will vote in a way that is consistent with their values. So God be with you. And uh, Janice, just uh, we got 30 seconds to tell people mm -hmm. we're on nationally now. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, want to see this program or others, or you have a friend you want to see, just have them to go to pastorstudy.org. You can watch all our TV shows right mm -hmm. on there, your computer for free, pastorstudy.org. And if they need to see this program, it should be on there if, if by the time you, you see this, pastorstudy.org. And uh, we will see you next time on The Pastor Study. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the gospel of Christ because of our generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org. Or write The Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always.